Hi, my name is Alessandro Tomparelli and I'm the developer of My Face Mask add-on, a project developed in collaboration with uh, Wasp. This add-on is uh, an extension of Blender, in particular Blender 2.82. Blender is a powerful open source uh, software for 3D modeling and can be downloaded for free from the website uh, www.blender.org. You need also to download the add-on that you can find on my GitHub. If you land on this page, just click on uh, clone or download and download the zip file. It's important that you do not extract the zip. You will need it as an archive file. Now, when you open Blender, probably the first time that you open the software, you find a splash screen and uh, inside this splash screen you can choose some option. Just, uh, I recommend to use a selection with the left button of the mouse and uh, associate the search to the spacebar action. Once you've done, you can just click somewhere else and you will open Blender with a default scene. If you need to install the add-on, you can go to Edit, Preferences, and from here you have to navigate to the add-ons panel. If your add-on is not installed yet, you can install, clicking here, and you can open your folder where you downloaded the add-on, and you can select the zip file and press install add-on. You can activate it. You can see a description of the add-on from here, and now the add-on is working. Now you can just close that window and you will find the add-on in the right panel that by default is closed but you can open clicking on this icon here and my face mask is here let me turn on the screencast keys so you will see what I'm pressing on my keyboard so by default you need to set up a scene because the default unit that you have in Blender are meters and also you have some object that we will not need so press setup scene it asks you a confirmation and will tell you that uh, everything will be lost. You press OK and now the scene is correctly set up with a correct unit and with some object that will be used automatically from the add-on. At this point you need to import your 3D scan model. So you can use import OBJ or STL or if you have other files you can find more options under the menu File import and you can import also other soft other uh, format so press stl navigate to the folder i have a uh, stl here import stl and this is the 3d scanned face that i will use the navigation inside the viewport uh, happen with the middle button of the mouse so if you press the wheel you can uh, orbit you can rotate around your object if you zoom in and out with the wheel, scrolling the wheel, you can move the camera in and out. And if you want to translate, you can hold the shift key and press the middle button and you will be able to translate the view. You have also some widget here that you can use. So if you click somewhere in this circle and you move the mouse, you can orbit. This is for the zoom and the hand is for, for the pen action. At this point the first thing that we need to do with this 3D scanned face is to align to the main axis. It's important that you align the face to the front view. The front view is the green dot here that you can see. If you click that green dot you will see the camera from the front view. You can check here in the corner. The red one is the side view and the blue one is the top view. So for align and rotate the, the face you can use the active tools from here. The rotation for example. Or you can also use some shortcut that I actually recommend. So returning to the default tool. The shortcuts are quite easy to remember. The G is for grab so you can use the G key for moving the object if you press the G key just one once you can move your object and you can align kind of to the center if you press the R key you can rotate your object as you can see now my object at the beginning had the origin that was far from the center of the geometry 
so as you can see the rotation is happening around a point that is not correct you can press escape if you want to stop any action and in this case it's convenient for me to center automatically the origin to the center of my geometry you can just uh, press the right button of the mouse making sure that your object is selected and you can set origin origin to geometry now you see the yellow dot is here and if you press R for rotating everything should work better I press G for moving and if I want to rotate around a specific axis I can go to the top view or I can press R and then choose one axis that I want to rotate around so for example if I press Z I can rotate around the Z axis it's important that your object is perfectly aligned with the center of your scene let's check from the top view as you can see the nose is not perfectly aligned so I can move a little bit on the right like this from the front remember the front is the green button okay now seems perfectly aligned maybe just a little bit okay perfect at this point we need to remesh our geometry sometimes some uh, scanned geometry have some holes or a density of polygon that is not perfect for what we are going to do so you can just use the remesh tool that automatically will uh, re-elaborate the geometry closing the parts that are open making a geometry that works better for our purpose okay as you can see it's still not perfect because we had a lot of missing information but it's not a problem because we are focusing mainly on the front part of the face so at this point we need to create the mask adapting to the face but the problem in this case as you can see is that we have some beard that can affect the quality of the geometry that we will create on top of this face so we have some useful tools in blender that are the sculpting tool so from here from the corner you can move from object mode to sculpt mode and here you have many brushes that you can use in order to edit your geometry manually the, the brush that we want to use is the smooth brush that is the first red icon here and now just clicking on the face you see that you can shave the face of the person we need a smooth and nice surface around the, the mouth and the nose okay be careful because when you smooth you can change the geometry the surface so you can also affect the quality of the final product this should be fine enough so at this point I can return to the previous mode the object mode now I can start to work on this 3D scanned geometry so click on define area and you will see that now everything is blue and you can now paint directly on this geometry in order to define the area that you want to cover with a mask so you have this brush so we can start from the nose defining an outline for our mask and you have to keep in mind that the mask will be adapted to the outer border so when you see this green yellow area here this is what it will be used for creating the mask so you can add and create both sides if it's not perfectly symmetric is not a problem you can fix that later if you want to remove some part maybe you have painted too much you can use subtract here and you can clean a little bit so you can shape as better as you can the area and once you are fine don't worry about what happened inside it's not a problem and now we can press adapt mask you can also change the radius if you need try not using very small brushes and now if we are ready we can press adapt mask as you can see now the mask is adapted automatically to the shape that we have defined with the color before 
At this point we can choose if we want to make the border symmetric so we can go to the front view here and check what we just did. We can activate the symmetric border, symmetric border on and now as you can see is more symmetrical. If you think that you didn't align perfectly the face at the beginning you can still select the 3D scanned face and press G in order to move a little bit. You can just do you can do only small movement in this part otherwise you can get some errors. If you want to stop this movement you can just press escape. At this point if you want to change the direction of a symmetry you can invert symmetry and use the other side of the geometry that you have defined so you can choose the one that you think works better. At this point we can align the filter because sometimes can happen that we have some intersection in the nose so if we use a line filter on automatically change the point of view showing in uh, overlays the face and the mask together so now you can align move the filter if you see that you have intersection in the nose you can consider to move a little bit and leave more room for the nose or you can change the distance usually it's better to keep it closer to the mouse and the nose in order to make a smaller object and also to have better comfort. We can press align filter off. Now we can manually edit and adjust the border is very something that we want to fix or to improve. So we can click on manual editing. You are going to do a destructive operation. Basically doing so you will lose the automatic symmetry that we have set before. So from now on the object can be asymmetrical. So press OK and if you need you can now click and move some point in order to shape a bit differently your mask according to your need. Be careful to make some symmetric movement. OK. And editing. At this point we need to define the holes position. You can activate show holes and now you can see those cylinders representing the holes. You can change the position and the position of those holes will be automatically symmetric. But remember your geometry can also be a bit asymmetric according to how you edit it or according to the 3D scanned face that you are using. So remember to check always what happened on the other side. Sometimes can go very close to the border or sometimes even outside. So just double check. This is fine for me. So I can keep that position. So I can hide the holes now. At this point you can do some refinement. For example you can uh, add some nose pressure. This part is the most important part. So you can reduce this value in order to add some extra pressure if you want to make sure that you don't have leaks of air around this part. Also you can choose a different thickness for the mask. By default we decide to use 1.6 because works fine for the extruder that we are using but you can also change and use different values. Of course if you use very high value consider that you can have some imperfection around the border. 1.6. Now you can also define an offset, a distance from the face. So if you increase that value you can see it will increase the distance from the face. If you want to keep exactly on the face you can keep 0 or 1 if you want just a small distance. At this point our object is fine and we can start to prepare the model for printing. So if you press prepare model it automatically will move the object to the origin and will show with those colors the overhang of your geometry. As you can see the bottom part is full red but it's not a problem because it's the part that will be touching the plate of the printer and there are some parts that are kind of blue and means that those parts have an angle that is uh, higher than 45 degrees. It's not a big problem for the moment so we can continue and at this point remember that this mask is custom made so it's personal for a specific person so it's important to insert a tag 
identity tag in order to remember who is the owner of this mask. So from here you can type a code or the name that you want to insert. So let's say that I use uh, AZ01 and now I can press insert tag. At this point you can press the F key in order to change the size of your brush or just having a preview of how the tag is going to be applied on the surface. So if you press F just once, you can see that you can move your mouse and change the size and you can choose the correct position that you prefer and see how it's going to be applied and then just click on the surface. As you can see the tag is now following the shape and uh, you have this small embossed area that maintains the thickness uniform. At this point our mask is ready so we can press done and we can export the STL of the selected object. STL, we can choose the folder I can use the same name, AZ01, and uh, it's Im quite important that you use the option selection only, otherwise all the geometry in your file will be exported. Remember, this is very important. Selection only, export, STL. If you open your file in Cura, you will see that the object is ready for printing and already aligned with the plate of your printer. Thank you.